Praise be Jesus and Mary. Today's liturgy, Palm Sunday, marks the beginning of what the church calls Holy Week, which culminates with the celebration of Easter Sunday, the day of our Lord's resurrection from the dead. Uh, the irony of today's feast is heard in the reading which began the celebration, the entrance reading, the triumphal entry of Jesus into the holy city of Jerusalem, which we read from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 19, followed by what we just read, today's Gospel, taken again from the same Gospel of St. Luke, uh, which speaks of the betrayal, the arrest, and the crucifixion of our Lord. It was not uncommon in the history of Israel for God's chosen people to one moment profess their love and their fidelity to the Lord, and then the next moment to betray God. This is masterfully portrayed in one of the famous movies of last century, The Ten Commandments, the one that star starred Charlton Heston, where, you know, with the Hebrews in one scene, you can see them glorifying God for the deliverance from slavery, which they had received with extraordinary signs and miracles. And then in the next scene, you see the same Hebrews uh, molding a golden calf and bowing down and worshiping that idol right in front of God's holy mountain, right at the foot of the mountain. The instability and the infidelity of the human heart is clearly seen in the relationship between the Lord, who is always faithful and patient and long-suffering, and his unfaithful, impatient people. Instead of peace between God and man, there is this tension. Uh, because why of man's fickleness and because of his infidelity? That relational discord still plays out even to this day in many of our lives and in our relationship with the Lord. You know, like the Israelites in the desert, uh, we can be unfaithful, we can be impatient, we can misunderstand God's ways and misunderstand his plans for us. And Yet God continues to practice patience, kindness, understanding, compassion, and mercy towards us. He says in the book of Malachi, I, the Lord, do not change. Malachi 3, verse 6. Uh, and God continues to work everything to our good and to work everything to his glory. So the relational dysfunction between us and the Lord is always on our end. It's, it's never on the Lord's end. You know, we mentioned a minute ago that there is an irony in today's Palm Sunday feast. At the entrance to the Mass, we heard the Israelites spreading their cloaks along the roadside to welcome the Messiah into Jerusalem. And St. John's Gospel adds that the people took branches from palm trees and went out to meet Jesus. And they were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. John 12, verse 13. And the palm branch was a symbol of victory, of triumph, of peace, and of eternal life also in the ancient world the ancient Mediterranean world. It was a symbol of an end of conflict or an end of competition, and the Jews at that time really did see Jesus' entry into the holy city as a sign of victory and as an end to conflict, though many of them had the wrong victory and, and the wrong conflict in mind. It was believed by many that the Messiah would not only be a spiritual leader, but he would be a political leader, as well, that he would break the bonds of Roman oppression and restore liberty and sovereignty and glory to the people of Israel and reestablish the earthly kingdom of David, the greatest of all Hebrew kings. The disappointment comes just a few days later, we could say just a few days from now, when Jesus reveals to Pilate and to the Jewish people that in fact his kingdom is not of this world, John 18, verse 36, that the Messiah that they were hoping for was not the Messiah that God had sent them. And the chosen people in their instability and in seeing their earthly hopes thwarted cried out in the gospel as we did today, away with this man, crucify him, crucify him. Luke chapter 23, verses 18 and 21. Just as they had turned their backs on God in the desert with Moses, so now the Jews turn their backs once again on the God whom they don't understand. Perhaps the greatest sin which we'll see uh, committed in this holiest of weeks is that profound lack of faith on the part of the Jewish people in response to their Savior. 
Their faith in God often was too superficial, it was too carnal, it was too horizontal and too narrow in its vision. At times, I'm guessing uh, we can fall into that same trap as well. You know, our prayer should really be aimed at knowing the will of God and being faithful to how He wants us to live rather than uh, wanting to put our own wills and our own expectations first and expecting God to adjust His plans to ours. That's not how He wants things to work. That's not how things work. And yet the irony of it all is that Christ did deliver a tremendous victory for his people and for us in this holy week because he delivered us from the oppression of sin, the oppression of Satan, and eternal death as well. So the cloaks and the palm branches and the shouts of Hosanna with Jesus' entry into Jerusalem reflected a truth that most of the Jews and probably all of the Romans were completely unaware of, completely unbeknownst to the Jewish people. They rightly hailed Jesus of Nazareth as the Messiah and King, but we can say that they did it for the wrong reasons. Today we remember in a particular way that Jesus entered into the holy city in order to celebrate the annual Jewish feast of the Passover with his disciples. The first Passover, as we know, marked the deliverance of the Hebrews from Egyptian slavery with the slaughtering of the lamb, the painting of the lamb's blood over the doorposts or the houses of the Hebrews, and then with the death of all the firstborn children and livestock in Egypt. And only with that slaughter of the firstborn of Egypt did Pharaoh's heart finally relent, and he cast out the Hebrew slaves from his land. You know, every year, the Israelites were instructed to celebrate that Passover feast as a memorial of that deliverance of slavery by the hand of God. And Jesus today enters the holy city as the firstborn son of God and as the firstborn son of Mary who with him will himself be slaughtered for us. You know, with his death, the strong hand of Satan will be forced to let God's people go. Just as Pharaoh, the ruler of the ancient world, was forced to release the Hebrew slaves So the true deliverer, Jesus of Nazareth, is more powerful than the prince of this world, who is the devil. And love, which is made flesh in Jesus Christ, is proven to be more powerful than hatred, which is personified in Satan. And love does one thing that hatred will never do. You'll never see hatred do this. Uh, Love sacrifices itself for the one it loves, for the beloved, as Jesus will do for us in this holiest of weeks. Every sacrifice, every sacrifice of the Mass is a memorial of that sacrifice which Jesus Christ makes of himself for us this Holy Week. Every sacrifice of the Mass is a representation of making present here and now of that one sacrifice of God's only begotten Son which paid the price for our sins. Every sacrifice of the Mass is an opportunity for us to eat of the Passover meal, which is a foretaste of the liturgy of heaven and which is a foretaste of eternal life. So as we greet our Lord today in his entrance into the holy city and when he comes down upon our altar in a few minutes' time, let's ask Our Lady for the grace to welcome her Son in spirit and in truth, in truth, knowing his true mission, which is, of course, to redeem us from sin, from Satan, and from death, Uh, not to redeem us from political realities, uh, and in spirit, welcoming him with grateful and repentant hearts. You know, the political and social realities and and misfortunes and even abominations which are present in our day and time, which include things like atheism, which also has a political offspring known as communism and socialism, other abominations like the occult, uh, Divorce, contraception, abortion, so-called gay marriage, transgender ideology, attacks on religious liberty, economic injustices. You know, all of these social ills will change only on one condition, only if we ourselves truly embrace the Messiah that God has sent to us in the person of Jesus Christ. And if we then allow that gospel to transform us and to inform all of our activities, all of our day-to-day activities. Uh, so let's not profess to follow Christ 
on Sunday today with palm branches in hand, uh, shouting Hosanna, and then deny him uh, in our words and actions uh, the other six days of the week. Let's uh, not do that. Uh, that only leads to one thing. It leads to crucifying our Lord's body all over again. Now let's ask Our Lady to welcome Jesus into our hearts and to live this Holy Week in union with her and in union with those who are true followers of Jesus of Nazareth, praying all the while for those who do not know Jesus and for those who still don't understand his mission. Praise be Jesus and Mary.